This is the talk we've all been waiting for, and we have two speakers, so twice the fun. Budwin from the Krita Hall of Fame, and Sebas, who's been a long-time Plasma contributor and has been in many academies telling us all about his exciting adventures. And if any of you guys like scuba diving, you should talk to him. He's really good at that, party. And hello, I'd like to go. Hi. So, welcome to this talk. We've called it Embracing Mobile. It's been a really exciting project for both of us. So we've been working on it for the past six, seven months. So, what's up with that? What, what, are we, what have we been trying to do? We've been trying to bring plasma to mobile phones, and we've succeeded. Now, why are we doing this? And why was I so excited that I wanted to work on this? The reason is that the existing mobile phone systems are way too close. It's just like we heard in keynote today. You've got this computer in your pocket and you can't really do anything with it except what the manufacturer allows you to do with it. So what we've been trying to do is break out of the walled gardens. We've been trying to make sure that we can build a system that respects your privacy. We've been trying to build a system that allows you to inspect and modify all the source code. And we succeeded. All right. Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. So we've been uh, working on mobile topics in the Plasma team thin since uh, 2009. Maybe some of you remember the uh, Nokia N900, and that was the first device uh, we were running, or we have been building a Plasma UI for. Uh, that was a really, um, really early thing, so we just tried to get something running on the device. Also didn't go very far. And um, KDE's and especially Plasma's ambitions really started to soar when uh, Nokia took over Qt and it was a period where uh, many things happened. Um, not a lot of results uh, from that, but it was certainly a good learning period and it got Qt to the point where it would be very useful on mobile devices. When Nokia, let's say, vanished, um, we started the Plasma Active project and uh, its goal was to release a uh, tablet with a novel uh, UI. Well, that unfortunately did, didn't work uh, out so well uh, for various reasons, but again, we learned about, uh, we learned a lot about uh, the mobile uh, space. But that is to say, outside of Plasma, there's actually um, really big successes uh, for KDE. First of all, WebKit runs on 90 plus percent of all mobile devices today, and that came from KDE. Um, the Caligra office suit runs on a shipped product uh, today, that is the, uh, the Jolla phone, and it's in the hand, uh, hands of users today. And of course, we have various frameworks which are becoming more and more successful, and some of them are also used on mobile devices. So, what's our vision? What, what did we really want to achieve? Freedom is the most important thing, but it's not just freedom. We also want to reach a point where everyone can use Plasma Mobile on a phone to run their lives, just like everyone is using Android these days to run their lives. We want to achieve a product, something that is finished and polished. We want to achieve something that is really, really secure and safe and respect your privacy. And at the same time, computers are for tinkering, computers are for tweaking. We want to make sure that this, what we are working on, is customizable. Not just by us, not just by you, but by everyone who wants to join. All right. All right, so let's, um, let's, get right to the, uh, let's get right to the beef instead of um, all talks. Let's look at what we, uh, well, what we have created so far, and after that we will uh, get you some more information uh, about uh, how we've been doing this stuff. So, smartphones, um, this is an LG Nexus 5 running a um, customized plasma shell, so it's the exact same stack as we're using on the desktop, but you see it looks quite differently. You can just, just install this on some parts of hardware right today. So in case you want to give me a call, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, 
not much demo effect there, but this is actually this has actually a uh, working phone connection, so um, you can make and receive phone calls with that. Some of the stuff you see, you um, know in principle, but they have gotten a mobile UI. These are the exact same notifications. So if an app fires a uh, notification through uh, the framework's notification API, it will just work here. We'll get a different presentation because it runs on a different form factor, but no changes in the apps for this kind of functionality. Then we have the Plasma Shell, the launcher. Um, it's still a fairly basic thing, but you can already change its, its look and feel. Um, you can personalize it to a certain degree. As you might have guessed, we support plasmoids, of course. Again, here's a different mechanism, customized for, uh, for the form factor. Gives a different uh, user interface uh, for adding a widget, and yeah, of course, we had to do a clock. So the point really is that the work uh, you've been uh, putting into your plasmoid can be transferred almost one-to-one -one, uh, to the new form factor. In some cases, if you're making too many assumptions about mouse and mouse overs and that kind of stuff, um, you'll have to change some code. So is this cool or is this not cool? Included K-Runner, and it's just as useful. I really think this is the first uh, time that, that there's a mobile system that shares so much code with the desktop system. And many of the things here you will actually recognize from the, uh, from the desktop UI. Um, uh, that means two things. Uh, they work on a mobile device, so all the APIs and everything is available. Um, they do adjust to a certain level uh, to different input methods. Um, but it also means we uh, haven't changed a lot and, and really optimized them uh, for the device. And um, we haven't been working for a very long time on this, but we got kind of a really good kickstart because there was already so much functionality which we could just take on the network management widget to few years to implement uh, well, and we can tap into that work. Of course, a big part of Plasma is the um, ability to be able to customize it to make it really yours. Um, we just show uh, some things here. I've, I've seen the video a couple of times already, but I'm still impressed with what we've actually managed to achieve. What we see here um, is um, a settings application which reuses um, KCMs written in QML. So you write a, QC, uh, a KCM once, and if it's, uh, if it's got a, a responsive layout, you can just install it on the phone, and it'll work. And some of the, uh, some of the modules we will actually uh, recognize. So again, we got a kickstart. Uh, this is the energy module, which is especially interesting on a mobile device. So you get really detailed, uh, detailed information. Coco, some of you might know about the application. It's a new um, image viewer and gallery developed uh, entirely in QML. And again, here, um, only slight layout changes to make it uh, suitable for a smartphone device, otherwise completely the same code base. You start the same application just on a different device and it adapts itself. Performance uh, is really surprisingly good because um, this is all hardware accelerated stuff. This goes through Wayland OpenGL, and we can make use of the very powerful hardware in the phone. We did also uh, borrow a whole bunch of apps. This is, for example, the web browser, which is also uh, used on Ubuntu Touch. Um, it works. Here's another one from, uh, from the Ubuntu Touch project, a weather application. It's, it's, it's one of the, the, the things that, that we feel is really important, is this is a system where every application is welcome. So 
of course, Ubuntu apps run. They are written in Qt and QML. Uh, KV apps run. Yeah, this is not using Mir. This is using Wayland. Also included some time wasting applications. And um, you know, this is not my real score. Normally, I, I score in the 900 or 1,000 points range. Yeah. So. <laughs> so this is the um, part where you get to model. to fight with LibreOffice again. Uh, that's what I mean. All right. So, uh, so we started this project as a Blue Systems internal uh, project because uh, we didn't put out, we didn't want to put out vaporware. We wanted to get it to a point where we could say, yeah, you know, uh, we can technically make this work and we wanted to get it to a point where it's actually useful for other people to join in. Um, we don't want um, you know, to get questions. So, oh yeah, this is really cool. So how, get, how, how can I get my stuff running on it? Yeah, you know, maybe wait a few months. We're still sorting out some deployment uh, issues. No, um, uh, you can test your stuff today. Um, if you have an NG Nexus 5, um, you can just uh, install and run it on it. We also have uh, XOPC. Uh, images and uh, x86 uh, packages so you can uh, test this stuff on your laptop and we can help with uh, with deployment uh, and testing on the phone. Um, that said, it was an internal project but last week um, I've moved all the code that uh, is actually special to the phone onto KDE infrastructure. Uh, we put this um, on KDE infrastructure, we put this under KDE governance. governance. We really want this to be an openly developed and not corporate controlled project. We also don't want uh, this to look like, well, Sebas hacked this up in a garage in between dives. Uh, we want this to be a commercial, high quality product. This has to uh, become a viable um, system that people want to trust and not something that's uh, really hobby. That is to say, if your hobby is hacking on software, this is an awesome target because it's all open. Also, we feel that we, uh, we as the free software community and especially KDE, we have the mandate to create software that respects and enables your privacy. Um, Baudovain said earlier that you pretty much caught in this, do I want features and shiny? Yeah, I have to. Uh, trade in some of my privacy uh, for that. Please don't. We want to offer an alternative that um, respects your privacy and that allows you to, um, to do with your data what you want independent of the features. Also, um, this thing is built around Qt because we love Qt because we think Qt is the best solution uh, to build applications uh, for uh, for mobile devices on, and it also really ties in with um, Qt runs everywhere and everything should be running um, on this phone. So, the milestones. We've reached milestone one. Yes, we have a product that people can install and developers can work on. That's already a huge step. It works. The video you saw was not uh, fake. That was what you can do with your and, and the next slide today. Next step, Doug Fruity, actually trying to use it day to day for technical and advanced users. That's something that we will be developing in the coming months. Then production ready for a really wide audience. A truly usable and competitive product. And I have to say that this is a really ambitious goal and a really ambitious time frame because that should be done this time next year. With that said, there's a lot of work ahead of us. Um, to summarize where we stand now, um, 
This is not something you put in the hands of your girlfriend if you're interested in a long-term relationship, okay? <laughs> so don't do that. Don't give it to your mother. You should not be happy with it. You can try it, though. You can have fun with it. You can help us to make it good enough for yourselves because we need to make something good enough for ourselves before we can make it good enough uh, for others. It's already uh, really a lot of fun to play with. It stretches what we can do with KDE and it also stretches the scope of KDE. It can really help us to get a new sense of relevance in the KDE project. Um, so what does it do? It um, uh, runs a kernel, it boots a shell, Plasma shell, this is the same binary that runs the desktop. There's no patching, no code changes. It just loads a different UI suitable for the phone. It has a dialer. It can uh, make and receive phone calls. You know, some strange people still um, actually expect that from smartphones. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, we are also using software that we didn't uh, do ourselves with really tapping into other people's resources. Uh, we want this to be a project where things come together rather than where we're saying, yeah, but this was not invented here, so we're not doing it. Uh, one really good example is the Malit uh, virtual keyboard, which is a very uh, mature thing. It is shipping uh, on real, uh, real products in the market today. Um, you can uh, briefly see it in the movie. It actually got a nice plasma skin, so it, it um, integrates uh, visually very well and um, it's not something we cobble together uh, just in one of Marco's sleepless nights or something like that. Um, that said, we also want to bring in existing functionality uh, so um, all the good stuff you know from the desktop is transferable uh, to the phone. It really gives us a, a head start in terms of features. You can run console, right? so you've got your terminal. What else do you need? Yes, and um, it runs various applications. So we showed some applications in the uh, in the demo video, um, but you know, uh, some people do not take mobile phone platforms seriously before they have passed the. Uh, we have over one hundred thousand applications uh, running on this. How many applications are there in, in the Kubuntu repositories? Must be more than one hundred thousand. We are good. We can run those. Uh, we have support for, uh, for X applications. Uh, so we run Wayland with X Wayland. You can start applications that haven't been ported uh, to Wayland uh, yet through the X Wayland stack. Um, of course, you can, uh, it's a Kubuntu system. There's Debian underneath. You can uh, run Debian software uh, on it. We also went a little bit further and uh, implemented support for uh, click applications. Those are the packaged um, applications uh, for Ubuntu Touch, the weather applet. Uh, the weather application I was showing earlier uh, is an example for that. And um, that probably gets us in the range of 100,000. And um, one thing we are going to uh, definitely cross this um, this magic boundary uh, with this support for Android applications. Uh, we are working on that right now and we expect that um, within a few weeks, months, depending on when we get some technical things sorted out, you can run Android applications on this. Um, and that means that um, you can give it at some point to your girlfriend and when she asks, can I send a WhatsApp message uh, with it? Yeah. You can just run the WhatsApp Android application and it'll work. The, the Android bit is quite exciting because this is going to be a completely open stack. Uh, Yola Stillfish phones also support Android apps, but they use closed source components for that and this will be open. Everything will be open. Yes, so yeah, you will be run you will be able to run Android applications not only on the Plasma phone, but also on the Plasma desktop. And that's one of the really, really important things for us because we, um, we're not saying the desktop is done now, we're doing something, uh, something fun and new, but we're adding the mobile uh, platform and UI to the Plasma offerings. We are continuing to improve the desktop. We also uh, want, to make, um, want to make a dent in the mobile uh, space and conquer these devices. So technically, the interesting bits uh, 
we started out building a plasma phone on top of MER. MER is, is basically the open source based for Silvius phone. Uh, it's an RPM based system that uses Wayland, uh, and we were using uh, Green Island and Tim Compositor. But then we decided, because well, this is a blue systems project, we are going to move to Kubuntu as a base and use Kubuntu phone. That proved to be really challenging. It was really challenging to get uh, Qt Wayland up and running on top of Kubuntu phone with the existing uh, stack. Because uh, all, all, all these free uh, open uh, and open phone systems, they are all based on Android, and somehow you mix a real Linux and an Android together in one way or another, uh, using a library that's called Lip Hybrids. So we were really struggling to get this to work, to get even a single image rendering on screen, until uh, Martin Gleslin uh, said, well, how hard can it be to actually use Quinn here? And then from that moment, the project really started to fly. Uh, ported Quinn to the phone, started writing a backend in that and talked to the Iris, and we were actually getting graphics. So what's, what's one of the most exciting things for me about this system is that we now have a phone system that runs Quinn and Wayland on top of a Ubuntu phone. All right, so um, let's see. What are we uh, going to do and why uh, can we make a difference? Because some people will say, yes, um, there's mobile phones and those are free enough. Um, in our opinion, they are not free enough. You have to trade in your privacy or even worse, sell your soul to, uh, to mobile vendors. Um, that's the reason for us. And that's the reason for, uh, for hardware uh, vendors. And let me tell you, they are not happy with being under the thumb of Google and getting source code thrown over the wall every once in a while. We have an active development community who uh, produces software for end users. We have an awesome infrastructure with our sysadmins deeply caring uh, to make us productive. We have a governance model that is actually very suitable for creating software and we have proven that in 20 years of being a successful and, and reliable um, maker of mainly desktop software. We have open and proven development processes. We know how we work together effectively. We know how to get things fixed. We know um, how we can create processes that um, improve the quality and that get our software out to the users. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, the wheel in all these uh, supporting factors so we can really concentrate on making good software and uh, doing uh, so even in a fairly short amount of time. And most importantly probably we have a proven track record of being open and uh, respecting freedom. If we put out something like that um, we have a benefit, um, an advantage in uh, trust already. Um, if we talk about privacy, we can do, the, do so with a straight face. If Google talks about privacy, not so much. So with that said, um, Blue Systems is working uh, on this, but um, we don't want it to be a corporate controlled project. Also, we want to involve the, the wider community because it's fun and it's going to be rewarding and it's also a very important project uh, to work on, both for KDE as a community but also for the users who are right now not really having options if they, uh, if they need the privacy. And it's not just end users at home. Um, if we want journalists to be able to communicate in a secure manner to discover things and not have them um, be discovered by governance and, and this chasing game. If we want to enable the Snowdens and Apple Bombs of this world, we need this kind of platform. We need you to help us create this kind of platform. And with that, I think we are coming to the questions part of this presentation. Yeah. in our best Spanish. Uh, yes, I wanted to know what's your security model. 
both either going to be a sandbox, uh, installation of applications, how do you make sure that uh, an application can just uh, track you everywhere with GPS, for instance, things like that? A lot of that depends on the application. Um, but uh, we also have to admit we are in a very, very early phase of this project. Um, so we have no good answer to that, like for many other technical issues. Um, as we said, this is not ready for end users uh, yet, and um, sandboxing of applications is one of the topics uh, we need to work on. It, it will also depend a lot on, 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 the, on, on, on the type of... Oh, I'll wait for you. Okay, so uh, then we're sandboxes on the application because that's built into the system. What we've got here is Linux. It is Linux. So uh, you could try to use SE Linux to uh, do the sandboxing, or you could try to develop a new model, but it won't be exactly like this on Android. It is based on the Unix system. But very, uh, very uh, good and important point. Um, two things we, uh, uh, we have mentioned. Um, what we are presenting here is a reference platform based on uh, Kubuntu. This is not a Kubuntu only project. We want other distributions to create a Plasma mobile uh, platform as well. If you um, want to get this to run on a phone running Fedora, we are going to help you. We don't, we don't want to create one single distribution uh, thing. We want to create a platform that you can run on your mobile devices on the, US, on the OS uh, you want it uh, to run on, and we will help you to get that running. I have two questions. Uh, I'm from Taiwan, and I remember a few years ago, maybe 2011 or 12, Aaron Seiko demoed a KDE in the Coast Cup. In the Coast Cup is the yeah. biggest open source conference in Taiwan. And so the demo of KDE Tab, but actually, very interesting, last year, KDE and GNOME both demo of the tab, but KDE Tab is more complete. But in Taiwan, we have, I, I know that it is a production, but in Taiwan, we have not any further progress about that tab. I, I don't know if it should be succeed or not. If not, how do you think you, uh, your work, Plasma Mobile, now will succeed? That, that's my first question. And the second, second question is similar. Compared to the, uh, now we have, besides in Android and iOS, we have Firefox OS, Ubuntu Touch. Yeah. What, what do you think your advantage other than uh, Firefox OS, Ubuntu, and even Android and iOS? Second. All right, um, so first of all, uh, this has actually uh, taken a lot of the code uh, from uh, uh, which was also making up the Vivaldi tablet. Um, this code has been ported to the framework side. This is not running X11 anymore, this is running Wayland, so the software stack is much, much leaner and much, much better. Um, then another important difference to, um, to the Plasma Active and Vivaldi projects is that we have decent hardware it runs on uh, today. The Plasma Active project was hampered by, we couldn't get it uh, to run on a real ARM device, so you usually had to lug, in, lug around a 900 gram uh, tablet. Um, this is a phone, so um, I carried a lot less luggage to this academy than to earlier academies. Um, that makes a big difference. And um, what is, why don't we just say this want to touch already and we're fine with that. Well, I think the past weeks have shown pretty well that um, Ubuntu Touch is not exactly a free and unencumbered platform. It's corporate controlled, and um, there are many questions around, tra around trademarks, 
which may end up making it not much, not a much better option uh, than Android for many hardware vendors. So we do have something to uh, uh, to bring to the table. Um, also, if you compare how long it took Canonical to get something running on a phone and what kind of resources they put in and how long it took us to um, put even uh, to get even a prototype uh, running. Let's interpolate from this and let's meet again at Academy 2016 and see where we stand, okay? okay we have time for one more question. Absolutely. Um, okay. So I have this diagram, which um, I, let's let me not pull it up right now. It's to save some time for. Um, so Quinn uses um, this device, LibHybris, uh, to get the graphics on screen. Uh, but it's it's Quinn. It has a backend for DRM, so it can use any other drivers. And um, same mm -hmm. same code base actually also runs on my tablet. So we've hidden uh, um, this difference neatly uh, away. Yes, we don't have a free graphics driver for our reference device. Yes, we want to. Good. Um, that's excellent. Um, the second question is, um, I mean, this uh, reminds me very much of the Gemini project and some feature that I've seen in Plasmoids since very, very early 4.0. Uh, which was that you can share plasmoids across the network. Um, so, is there any? <clears throat> is there, there this going to be in one of those systems where, which everybody's trying to do, where you you have it in your pocket, but as soon as you come near a near a large screen and a keyboard, it suddenly turns or a projector, it suddenly turns into a proper desktop. Um, or will it be able to, you know, read the mind of my laptop and show me the relevant plasmoids, for example, the calendar? Or it may be able to read your mind. It probably won't send this data to uh, to random services. Um, but yes, the use cases you are talking about, uh, we have worked on them uh, so far. Um, we've been concentrating on getting the basics uh, to work. Um, we definitely want. To turn this into a device that, uh, de depending on uh, the use case, you run it on. But uh, probably for the plasma case, much more important is you usually start something on a device and the device doesn't uh, change. So it's not critical right now to have it um, morph into something different if you uh, plug, some, uh, plug something in. But uh, with the plasma architecture, this has been uh, planned from day one. So Yes, it's fairly easy to support this kind of use cases. Thank you. I will be on five minutes late, so that's all the time we have. They can yep. be around the academy, so you can find them.